Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, last week I got spanked. No sugarcoating here. I had the Saints, the Thursday night game, laying a point. The Saints got blown out by the Denver Broncos. I had Green Bay laying two and a half points over Houston, lost that game. I had the uh, Vikings laying two points over Detroit, lost that game. So let's try to get back in the saddle after an 0-3 week. So just recognize sometimes you're going to hit the iceberg. I've fallen off the horse. Let's try to get back on. This week in Seattle against one of the league's best teams, the Buffalo Bills. I like Seattle getting three points. Let me also point out, too, that I got some of these lines over the last 24 hours. Uh, just be aware that I like to grab lines early. I'm not one of those people who likes to wait. I like Green Bay laying four and a half on the road at Jacksonville. Next, Kansas City continues to amaze me. I'm surprised that they beat San Francisco last week. San Fran is banged up. Uh, but it was a rematch of a contentious Super Bowl. Anyway, Kansas City is now going to the Raiders. I like the Raiders getting 9.5 points. Raiders plus 9.5. Finally, some guys never learn. I took Green Bay last week. Lost that game. Uh, they won, but didn't cover. I like the Vikes again this week. Right? Laying three points at the Rams. Again, the Vikings laying three points at the Rams. So, to sum up, I like on a point spread, Seattle plus three, Green Bay minus four and a half, the Raiders plus nine and a half, the Vikings laying three points. Let me also say in terms of big picture. Wow, Tampa Bay suffered debilitating injuries yesterday, both to the same position. Right, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. You know, um, let me just say, wow. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take Atlanta laying two and a half over Tampa Bay in a divisional matchup this week, right? But just understand, Tampa, Baker Mayfield's having a great year, but his receiving court just got decimated. I know they tell you injuries don't matter that much unless it's the quarterback. I believe here it matters. Let me also point out too, in Pittsburgh, Russell Wilson is, in my eyes, a monumental upgrade over Justin Fields, right? The team now can throw deep. Understand, Russell already has a connection with Pickens. Uh, that just opens up the offense. We know Pittsburgh already has a great defense. I'm not saying Pittsburgh has as much as Baltimore does in the division. But let's just say Pittsburgh's off to a great start to the year. They are very well positioned for a wild card berth. If you're a futures better, you know, we all understand Pittsburgh faces an uphill battle to win the AFC, right? With teams like Baltimore, Kansas City lurking out there. We understand that, Buffalo. Uh, but at the same time, Pittsburgh, you're going to get great odds because of that public skepticism. You're going to get great odds. This is the kind of team that, in a futures market, you can do something with because it looks like they're going to make the playoffs to me, right? They have a head coach who has never finished under 500 as a pro head coach. And now you have a quarterback who can take the top off 
of a defense, right? Justin Fields, no doubt, is the better athlete, right? Folks, this isn't a position for great athletes. Just think of the best quarterbacks you've seen over the last, let's say, three or four decades, right? Um, a lot of playing quarterback is read and recognition and touch. Russell Wilson has all of them. He's an eight-time pro bowler, right? I believe this is a special situation at a minimum. Let's agree. Pittsburgh has depth at the quarterback position, right? So take a hard look at the Steelers, um, you know, from where I sit, how I like to bet, which involves futures. I'm looking for teams like this that have great cultures, right? Tomlin has a lot of longevity. Um, it's Tomlin's team. Uh, they know who the boss is in Pittsburgh, right? You have a great culture. You have a multiple Pro Bowl quarterback. And you have a great defense in a division where some teams have stumbled, right? I think, I still think Cleveland has a lot of talent. They stumbled out the gate and took themselves out of contention. As good as Cincinnati's offense has been, they stumbled out the gate. And, you know, all I'm saying is that's created a huge opening for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, some teams that have a lot of talent, look at the Charger defense. That's a special unit. But the Chargers have stumbled a little bit. Right? Lost to Arizona yesterday. Um, the Jets, of course have a defense that's actually much better than their offense, they've stumbled. They've lost some games. They've had dysfunction. The head coach was walked out of the building. They have a guy who's never been a head coach. They have a new number one receiver, right? Because of that turbulence, the Steelers have an edge on teams that, in terms of personnel, should be competitive with that right let me just say too in the nfc wow uh san francisco i don't know what else to say brock purdy is actually playing pretty good ball he threw some away this uh last weekend but he's playing pretty good ball um the team around him is getting Let's say different guys are having different problems. The Brandon Ayuk injury is huge, right? Because um, while they have Kittle, while they have an excellent quarterback, just understand the Niners really don't have a lot of great deep threats. As you look at this team, great defense, by the way, spectacular defense, right? As you look at this team, just understand they haven't been close to full strength, and now it looks like the passing game is never going to be at full strength this year, right? So that's a cause for concern, but you need to realize that the Niners coming off a loss to Kansas City, right? A defensive team with a great quarterback, right? The Niners personnel-wise are still an elite team. Nobody has run away yet with the NFC West, right? Just food for thought. Let me also say, too, Jaden Daniels wasn't just, well, isn't just a leading candidate for Offensive Rookie of the Year, right? Jaden Daniels from this seat was in the MVP race. Now, he's been banged up. We don't know exactly how serious the rib injury is, right? All I can say is forget the numbers that show that Washington has among the best offenses in the game, right? Forget those numbers. If there's uncertainty about the health of Jaden Daniels, you cannot rely on the commanders, right? He is that important to the team right as i've said here don't consider him a rookie 
you need to consider him one of the strongest MVP candidates in the league. That injury is significant. Right, just food for thought. So those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this video. Again, I like Seattle on a point spread, Green Bay on a point spread, Raiders on a point spread, Vikings on a point spread, and the Atlanta Falcons coming off a loss on a point spread. That's how I see it for this coming week. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.